So let's recall what a hydrohalogenation reaction is. Let's look at the following two alkenes. Let's suppose we have an asymmetrical alkene shown here and we add an HBr molecule. So our reaction is known as hydrohalogenation. And in the first step, we have the protonation of this alkene. What happens is the pair of electrons in the pi bond of the double bond attacks this H, displacing this bromine, forming the following two products. So our carbocation intermediate and our bromine anion. So notice the H goes onto this carbon and not on this carbon because we want to form the more stable secondary carbocation and not the less stable uh, primary carbocation. Now in the second step we have our bromine acting as a nucleophile using its pair of electrons to capture this positively charged carbocation carbon and we form the following final product. So this is known as a hydrohalogenation reaction. The first step is our protonation step, the second step is our nucleophilic addition to our carbon. Now Let's look at the second type of reaction. Now we want to change things a little bit. We want to use the same alkene, but now instead of using an, an HBr molecule, an H attached to our halogen, we want to use a water molecule, so an H attached to our hydroxide. So we want to ask the question, will this reaction take place at a high rate, or at least at a reasonable rate? Well, to answer this question, let's first look at the mechanism. So, in the mechanism, this is very similar to the above first step. We have our capture of this H. So, the pair of electrons in the pi bond of the double bond takes this H, displacing this hydroxide, forming a hydroxide and our carbocation, our secondary carbocation. Now, let's compare this protonation step with this protonation step. Notice that these act as acids and these are our bases. So let's see which one of these bases is a better base. Remember, the stronger the base, the weaker its conjugate acid. The weaker the base, the stronger its conjugate acid. So let's look at our bromine and let's look at our hydroxide. So hydroxide is a much better base than bromine. In fact, hydroxide is a very good base and that means water is a very weak acid. Likewise, bromine is a very weak base and that means HBr is a very strong acid. So this reaction takes place readily because this is a very good acid and it's able to donate that H ion. On the other hand, since this is a very strong base, this is a relatively weak acid and it will not readily donate this H ion. Now if we look at the pKa of these two acids, notice that the pKa of HBr is negative 9. That's a very good number. So that means this will be a very good acid. Remember, the lower the pKa, the better our acid. Now water has approximately positive 15 pKa and that's a very high pKa, relatively high pKa. And so that means this protonation step will not take place readily because this water molecule will not protonate this alkene at a very good rate. So once again, hydroxide is a strong base and so its conjugate acid, water, will be a weak acid. Therefore, water will not be able to protonate the alkene. So the question is the following. How do we resolve this protonation issue with hydration? So hydration is simply the addition of our water molecule that is able to create an alcohol as we'll see in just a moment. So how do we resolve this issue? Well, one way to resolve it is to make this into a very good um, H donator, so to use some type of acid. So what we can do is use a catalyst. So normally in these types of reactions, to increase the rate of our reaction, we use an acid or base catalyst. Now our body uses different types of catalysts known as enzymes, but under lab conditions, we can use catalysts such as acids and bases. So instead of using this water molecule, which is a weak 
acid. Let's use a strong acid such as hydronium. So let's suppose our first step, in, in our first step we take the same alkene and instead of adding water we add hydronium. And now hydronium has a positive charge and that means it will donate this H ion readily forming the following carbocation. Now, now, once again, this H can be captured onto this carbon or this carbon. Remember, we want to form the more stable secondary carbocation and not the less stable primary. So this will not be formed, but this will be formed. So this is known as the protonation with acid catalyst. So the more stable carbocation is produced in this step. In the second step, we have a very similar reaction taking place like with this addition reaction. In this step, we have the capture of our nucleophile. Now the water molecule that was produced here captures this carbocation forming the following oxonium ion. So this is known as the oxonium ion because this oxygen has an extra H. We have a water molecule with a positive charge. This will not be very stable and deprotonation will take place. So this step is known as the addition of water. So once again, we have the protonation with acid, then we have the addition of water to the carbocation, and the and the third step, the step that we did not have in our hydrohalogenation reaction, is the deprotonation of substrate, of this substrate, and catalyst regeneration.